Can you cast your mind back to the end of 2018 when the new Zero Navigation came in? I certainly can. There was a few choice words, let me say. It was, what on earth is going on here? As human beings, we tend not to like change. We pretend that we do, some of us do more than others, but we like to be in our comfort zone. So the new navigation came in and we were thrown by it. First thoughts were probably, possibly, that we didn't like it. Now, a few months down the line, do we even think about it? Probably not, we're probably happy with it. Yes, I would rather that you could get to zero files without two clicks, and I would rather that my favorite reports weren't creating a huge list. But other than that, I think safe to say we're more than happy with it and we're comfortable with it. Now we've got something new from Zero again, which is what we would expect from Zero. It's the new style of creating sales invoices. You have the option, you have the old style or you have the new style. The temptation will be for a lot of us to stick with the old style but at least have a look at the new style, play around with it and see what you think. That's what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to head into Zero, have a look at the new style and talk you through what my initial thoughts are. Like anything in Zero, I'm sure it will change. I'm sure it will improve as time goes on. It's early days yet. And yes, you can switch between the two. You can choose which one you want to use, but let's go and take a look at the new style sales invoice in Zero. Okay, what does Zero say about the new sales invoice? And it says it's more intuitive and it will save time. It also saves your document as you go along. I know for some people that has been an issue previously. They have lost sales invoices in the middle of creating them. Okay, so let's do a little experiment. Let's create a sales invoice. So I'm going to choose my favorite plus invoice. I'm on the invoice screen and let's start. Okay, so who's it going to be? For two, it's going to be to Cool Kitchens. Today's date, due date is fine, the invoice is okay. Um, I'm going to sell them some stuff. There's going to be one of them, it's going to be £100. I need to change the sales code because it's going to be kitchen stuff and I'm going to approve. One sales invoice created. Right, I want to create another invoice, but this time I'm going to use a new invoice. And down at the bottom of your screen, you have this option to switch. If you switch and for any reason you don't like the look of it or you don't like using it, you can switch back. Once you start using the new invoice, and Zero will default to that. So next time when you go to create a new invoice, it will be the new style. Okay, let's look at creating the same sales invoice with the new format. It's to Cool Kitchens, again. We don't have a reference. What are we selling them? We're selling them stuff. The quantity is going to be one, it's going to be 100 pounds, it's not, it's going to choose a code. I can change it right here. So it's going to be kitchen stuff. And then it's going to save it. Choose the option here and mark it as done. So let's look at the new invoicing in a little more detail. What do we like about it? Let's create a new customer. So we want to invoice a new customer and we say, yes, it's a new customer. Now here we can fill in the details at this stage. So previously you would have set up your new customer and then you'd have gone back in and created the address and then you probably go into contact. So it's quite nice here that you can fill it in, especially the email because in a sales invoice, we'd expect that you're going to be sending it. You can choose save when you're happy with that. So that's our new customer set up. The reference field comes first. So if you've got a purchase order, for example, you'd fill it in there. The invoice number as before is automatic. The issue date defaults as before to today. There's a drop down here. So you can say, well, do you want it to be tomorrow, which is possibly what you would want, or you can choose another date. So defaults to today, but you can choose another date. The due date 
Now I have set up defaults for 30 days, so that's going to be automatic. Again, I used to like the shortcut, so you could put plus seven, plus 30, but here in the drop down, you can choose seven days, 14, or the other options you're likely to have. Now let's just check. So if we put plus 40, for example, does that work now? It doesn't seem to. Right, let me try again. I'm back on, let me go right back to here and tab through. So now I'm on here, can I do plus 40? Yeah, it does actually work. Well, at least I think that's 40 days. So we've got 30 days in June plus 10. Yes, so it does work. Standard, that is the layout. So if we went to here, we could choose a different layout as before. Item, now if we're using item codes, when we click on there, they appear on the list. What you can't do, and you could do in the old version, is you could add a new code here. If you were choosing it, you could add it. Quantity defaults to one and it's picking up the widget code. Okay, so if we don't want that line, three dots and we can remove it. Okay, if we're not using widgets, we can just say, again, we're selling some stuff. Quantity will be one, price, whatever you want, 50 pounds. So we change the code here. So you just quick drop down and say, let's choose that code quick drop down for the VAT. So if you have a different VAT code, if you're using tracking, see how easy it was to get lost there. If you're using tracking, quick drop down. Again, you can't add a tracking code here. So if you had department one and department two, but this transaction should be department three, you can't sneakily add it. Now I won't be surprised if Zero will add that at a later date. So if you're using tracking, or if you're adding new items, I would say you probably want to stick with a classic invoicing at this stage. When we're happy with our line, we just add another item. So let's say we just want to sell some more stuff. Quantity is two, whatever we want. So account we pick up from here and you can see Zero has chosen it. So it's chosen bedroom items, which is the first code. If we change it to kitchen, it's chosen the VAT, which will usually be correct. If you wanted to change, it would be there. And you can see it's saving as we go along. So you've got a draft invoice, but it's been saved as a draft. So no longer down at the bottom, do you have your blue to save as draft and your green to approve. If we go here, the extended menu, the three dots, more options, what does it give you? You can change invoice fields. What do you want to see? So you could say, for example, we never need the reference field so you can remove it. You remove that and save. Now you see your layout has been tailored to what you want and that's no longer there. Okay, preview on the screen as before. Choose the drop down and you can print it if you want to print a PDF, which is always quite nice just to see how your invoice looks. So you can see new customer, but we didn't input the information. It's using the layout that we chose. We've sold stuff and more stuff. And our layout, we don't have units and values. If you had, obviously they would appear on here. So that's a PDF. We can head back in there. Now, if we went to the three dots here, we can also edit our invoice. We can send it straight from here. We can print it, which we just did, or we could copy it. We can also create a repeating sales invoice from our invoice here. And if we wanted to delete it, we could. Now another sneaky thing you can do, straight to invoice settings. And here's our layout. Let's choose options and let's choose edit because this is a standard layout that we used. And let's say, well, actually we do want to show item codes. We want to show the unit price. We never want the ad payment advice cutaway. That's another story and let's save. So we sneaked into there. And now when I go to the three dots and I choose print, or just print PDF, there we have it. Now we have quantities and unit prices being shown. So that was a quick way to change the layout. So that is a very quick look at the new invoice and certainly don't be afraid to play around with it. My thoughts at this early stage is if you use item codes, in other words, products and services, you possibly don't want to use it at the moment. Likewise, if you use, let's go to advanced, 
and you use tracking in your business, tracking categories, you might not want to use it as well because you can't sneakily add categories in here. If you don't need to sneakily add them, then the chances it will work for you. Play around with it, see what you would think. I would love to know your thoughts as well. That's a zero new sales invoicing. As always, if you like my videos, please let me know that you like them. And why don't you subscribe to the channel so you get notified when new videos are uploaded each week. Until next time, happy zeroing.